Okay, well, first things first, before we get this video started, uh, this video, I swear, is about video games. I know I'm, a, I'm very much, like, kind of kind of everywhere on this channel, but, um, I don't know, I guess that's just kind of me, you know? First things first, I want to show you what it, this pot, uh, this plant is here, because it's not just a plant. It's a little mannequin! And my bed is right over there, so he stares at me at night. It's the head man. So, yeah, uh, let's talk about this thing I want to talk about now, because I'm kind of a guy that just kind of talks about things that I kind of want to talk about, about right now. And, uh, about oh, right now. Games die, you know? And it's it's okay longevity means uh the lifespan of a certain person is normally how we attribute it but when it comes to art i don't like calling games art i i do think that there are games out there who can be considered art but i mostly uh, think of games as entertainment uh kind of like music this is also make a hot take uh, I think a lot of music isn't art. It's just kind of entertainment, like my own music. I don't think of it as art. I think it as funny song with big bass and makes people go, Wah! which is uh, kind of cool. And I like that. But longevity kind of uh, gets a different uh, idea when it's put into a thing. But when it comes to games, it's kind of difficult to really... When, when, when should a game die? And should games even die? Because in one sense, everything has a end. Kind of like our universe, kind of like our life, kind of like uh, me banging your mom. You know, it has an end. I'm sorry, I'm not banging your mom. She's a very nice lady though. Uh, say hi for me. But everything has a certain lifespan. But with art, it's difficult to say it's lifespan. We have the Mona Lisa, which is old. I didn't look it up. I'm just pulling this out of my ass, but it's old, you know? But people still remember it. And people also talk about that there's, uh, well, not people, a philosopher that I can't remember his name of or her name of. Fucking, I don't know, I'm an ally. Like a philosopher once said uh, that you die twice. First time is uh, when you actually die, you know, your physical body is like, you know. And then the second time is when uh, people stop remembering you. How many obscure games are there? I, I have no, I actually have no fucking idea how many games there are there, but I know there's, there's at least four. There has to be at least four. There's probably certain games that you haven't thought about in a long time. The second time of your death is when people haven't thought of you for about 70 years. And that's your actual death. There's also another theory, like a waiting room, where people are waiting to get into heaven. So it's actually quite bad to be really known. I th I'm pretty sure there is this theory or this meme or some stuff like that. Buddha, who's just been waiting in the airport to get into heaven. And he's been waiting for like 4,000 fucking years because people still believe in Buddha, right? That's pretty bad, you know? But games, it's okay for games to die. But why do we cling on to games? I, myself, am a huge uh, Bloodborne fan, for example. And a Tekken fan. I'll prove it, because I have a, I have it tattooed on me. I have the... Goddamn. I have the Blood Cleaver tattooed on me. And up here I have... And up here I have fucking King from Tekken. Because it was the first game I ever played. And I like it very much. And Bloodborne was not the first game I ever played. But the tutorial did help me a lot. Keep tutorials and games. I'm a... I'm a fucking ally, you know, but kind of like games and with people when we were like a child We would be like clinging onto um, our mother's bosom just to grow up and then Find a partner to cling onto her bosom, but it has a lot to do with the comfort of games I recently started playing Tekken 8 and I get the whole like nostalgia feeling back, right? First time I played Bloodborne it took me like, I don't know, 70 hours to beat, right? And I was really like just exploring the world and enjoying every environment and really just going for it, right? Then I moved into a house with a bunch of people that I really love. Hey, if you guys are watching this video, uh, and also the rest of you. And uh, there was this one guy that I live with and uh, we would go out uh, partying from time to time. And then I would wake up and I would be waking up a little bit later than him and I'll go down and sit on the couch. And then he would look at me uh, with the biggest like hangover a man can have. And he looks at me through his glasses and he's like, you want to do a playthrough of Bloodborne? And I'm like, hell yeah. And then that just became a thing that we started to do. We would we would go out drinking, then we'd wake up, then we'd make breakfast, and then we'd play Bloodborne. We would do that so often that we actually got uh, really fucking good at Bloodborne. You know, we started doing forest skips. We started like just skipping bosses and finishing the game in like six hours. Which I know the speedrunners out there fucking sitting and playing every single day waiting for it to come to pc but bloodborne doesn't need to be on pc the reason why we can cling to games is because that if first of all if we play an old game enough we start getting really good at it because that's just how the humans are right and 
when you get good at something, you're like, hell yeah. Kind of like, you know, in Rainbow or in CS, when people make Smurf accounts, right? You might have 6,000 hours on your main account, but then you make a Smurf account. So you can go down and get that power fantasy. You also inadvertently kill your own game because you are really good at the game and then new players play the game for the first time and then they just get insta headshot and then uh, people are just gonna be like fuck man this game sucks people are way too good and then they stop playing the game so yeah don't smurf also so that's why they get that little power fantasy before they go back to their little job or i don't know middle school that's one of the reasons why we can cling to games and don't want them to die i also think another reason as a fighting game uh, player I still really enjoy Tekken. Obviously, the Tekken 8 just came out. I fucking love it, even though people are like fucking... You know, I I really like it. Uh, but a thing I've also noticed there a lot is that people are like, Oh my god, Mr. Harada. Harada is the guy that is like the CEO of Tekken, I guess. <laughs> Actually CEO of Tekken. And then they're like, Mr. Harada, please, can't you put... Insert uh, other character from other game into Tekken. Can you please do that? Let, I'm gonna fucking say... Uh, character I, I don't know fucking the green guy from uh the green guy from street fighter and then people are like oh it would be so cool if harada put green guy from uh street fighter into the game that would be so cool i'll i'll i'll, I'll let you in on a little secret i'll i'll let you just your eye just your eye i'll let you in on a little secret the character you want in the game they actually made an entire game where he's in it and you get to play as him also isn't that cool? But that's because people cling to games and they want to share their love for this game with other people. But I'm gonna be completely honest, there's a reason why I play Tekken and not Street Fighter. Because if I wanted to play as green guy from Street Fighter, I would be playing Street Fighter and I would be playing green guy from Street Fighter. Then I wouldn't be playing Tekken. I don't care. It's, I understand it more when it's like Dead by Daylight and people are like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if... Uh, I don't know, Hellraiser was in Dead by Daylight, which is like, yeah, that, that would be cool. You know, that's movie. People can see movie. And even if you haven't seen movie, then you can just, I don't know, see movie. It takes like an hour, but especially if it's old horror movie, then it's like, it's like usually 90 minutes perfectly. And I think the reason for a lot of this is happening, why we cling to these old games and we want the old games that we really used to enjoy as child is obviously to get the nostalgic feeling back like, oh yeah, I'm a little kid and I don't have to fucking, I don't know, pay taxes or I don't know, go to work. And as the crystal people also say, it's like a way to like heal your inner child. <laughs> and a big problem that can come with uh, having these old games and trying to keep it going can also be like remakes, remakes and remasters. We've seen a huge inflation, I would say, of uh, remasters and remakes. And I don't wanna take this with a grain of salt because I don't really play single player games, but I'm pretty sure that The Last of Us has had like four different remakes and remasters. And I'm pretty sure that only one of them are actually good. Uh, the rest is just like, oh, we, I don't know, we fucking released the game again. Oh, Skyrim. Bro, Skyrim doesn't need to get ported anymore. You can literally port it down to a fucking egg yolk if you wanted to. You don't need to port it more. I don't need it on my fridge. I didn't even like Skyrim. <laughs> I didn't. I'm sorry. I, could, I couldn't keep it a secret anymore. I don't like Skyrim. I don't think it's a fun game. This video is actually only about how much I hate Skyrim. Wouldn't it be funny if I fucking did an H-bomber guy and put a fucking green screen down and then just started hating on Skyrim for like two hours? No, I don't really like Skyrim, but I don't mind people that like it, right? I don't know, Push Road R or something like that. But remakes and remasters can also obviously sour a lot of the ideas that we had about a game. There's obviously a good way to do it and there's a bad way to do it. Uh, there's the Tomb Raider that was pretty good where they were just like, Hey, uh, we kind of made the trilogy look better. And then if you want to, you can also play the old version, which is kind of cool. Or uh, like the port uh, that they did for uh, Mario. Uh, the 64 and the galaxy and the sunshine because I hadn't played those games because I as a child I just didn't have those consoles so when I got older and I played Odyssey I was like oh damn Mario fucking slaps and then they were like hey you want it for your switch with three games and I was like damn I don't know what porting is so hell yeah and I also wanted to use my uh, new N64 smash pro uh, smash controller yeah I'm cool like that I'm a guy that spends my money like that I say and I also have a fight stick worth like i don't know 700 dollars next to me but whatever so that's things where it's like it it makes sense to have remasters and ports and stuff like that but then there's also like the yeah halo remaster where they were just like 
oh yeah we kind of make it look better but it doesn't really look better and uh we kind of uh budge this one guys i fucking love bloodborne i think it's an amazing game and i wish to see bloodborne everywhere well, uh, not in real life. Please uh, keep that shit out of real life, please. I don't want my, I don't know, my mom to turn into a huge monster because she saw crazy things that she shouldn't say because she's a little samey. But I don't need it on PC because the experience I had when I started playing Bloodborne will never be the same. I love Bloodborne, but even if I get the old game back again and I get to play it anew on another with a new remaster or a new or new port it won't be the same as the first time i played it and that sucks obviously that sucks but that's life and it's okay for your old games to die out we don't have to keep reimagining or remaking or remastering your old games that you used to love and you used to like if you want to play them go ahead Go back and play them and try to relive a little bit, a little piece, a little piece of magic that made your childhood better. But we don't have to continue because even though that's something you might like, doesn't mean that I might like it. And now a little rant on the other side because because there's a lot of different reasons why games even die to start with. And I just thought it would be fun just to risk a couple reasons up. I made a list. And also, if you do want your game to survive for seemingly eternity here's a little things that you could implement into your um, i don't know life then listen up this is how you are gonna make your games last forever and also if you are nintendo and if you are blizzard if you are john blizzard and john nintendo then you should definitely listen up because this is how you make sure that people uh, that your games don't die number one not enough content uh, actually not a problem with those two guys but generally if you make a new game uh, put in content so people actually continue to play it number two uh, not allowing modders to mod. That's a huge part of why games die. Because at some point people are like, Oh damn, I, uh, I don't really want to play this game anymore. I feel like I've done everything, right? Number three, cracking down on uh, user creators. Uh, don't do that. Literally makes zero sense. It's uh, literally free advertisement. Makes no sense. Stop doing that. Uh, number four, releasing competitive games with no competitive system. That's actually... I've seen... In the last like four years, I've seen so many competitive games come out with no competitive system in it and it like, instantly kills their game because people are like, damn, why should I play this if I don't get a little funny 100 points every time I win or when I do something cool or if I don't get a little pack that says, hey, you did it, woo, you know? And it doesn't even have to be anything crazy. It's just like, I don't know, 100 points when you win and uh, lose 100 points when you lose, you know? And then you can work out the kinks later. I don't know if you're into bad MMR systems, kind of like CS or something like that. Number four or five or seven or how many uh, things I said. Just letting cheaters fucking completely control your game. Kind of like CS also, where it's just like, man, I really want to play some CS. And then you go into a game and then it's like, damn, I really don't want to play CS because I'm getting fucking, a dude killed me by shooting down into the ground. And then they make uh, another account and then they never get banned. That's also a way to kill your game. Yeah, it's okay for games that I. Um, but if there's a game you really enjoy, then show it to the people you care about. Because if they care about you, then I'm certain they'll care about what you like. And other than that, that was it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Now I guess I'll have to go back and play fucking Tekken 3 again. Or do a speedrun of Bloodborne again. Because, fuck it, why not? Have a good day. <laughs>